Hi Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome to do my yarn adventures this week. Yes, I'm back. I'm trying to get back into it um, after the loss of our beautiful boy and our family member Baxter. June was joyful. Had an amazing time in June, but paid for it in July. I just felt like my world was crashing around me. They say things come in threes. Well, they came in a dozen for me. Finishing on the 25th of July with the passing of my little boy Baxter. Um, it was unexpected. He had been with us for nine years. He was fit and healthy. Um, to all those people who sent prayers and lovely messages and all and contact me, thank you so much because he wasn't just a dog. He was a member of our family. Um, to explain briefly, I guess, what happened, he was fine Sunday and Monday morning and Monday night he was a little off his food but Tuesday morning you could tell there was something seriously wrong with him. Um, we took him to our vets, our vet took one look at him and wanted him rushed to the emergency vets. His O2 sats were down to 15%. Um, they tested for rat poisoning, paracetamol poisoning, aspirin poisoning, snake bite, everything came back negative. Um, he fought for about five days. He um, had two blood transfusions and was in an oxygen cabinet. On Friday, we got back from a path results from a university research centre that he had contracted a bacterial infection that just ravages the red blood cells. Um, apparently, it's very rare in Australia, but it's very common in Europe. It's spread by cats and he got it through either a mosquito bite or an ant bite. It is treatable, but he was very, very sick. He was jaundiced, his O2 sats weren't coming up. On Friday when we saw him in the oxygen cabinet, he was wagging his tail, he seemed a little better. But on Saturday morning, on the 25th of July, his little heart gave out, his little heart couldn't take any more. And we lost him. It was devastating. His, he was not like any other dog we had owned. Um, to lose a pet suddenly is very traumatic. We've had other dogs that have died of old age or they've had cancer and you expect it. It's sad but it happens. But to lose him like that was just devastating and my family's still trying to recover from it. I contacted the breeder um, she only ever had one litter, Holly, his mum. That was she wasn't really a breeder, um, and he was like the runt or the unwanted pup in the litter. He came out cream when he should have been black and grey. He had a deformed ear, and no one really wanted him at fourteen weeks. I know um, she was thinking of keeping him, but she couldn't really afford to, and we bought him and flew him up here. His original puppy name was Bruce but we changed it to Baxter. So yes, we've had him cremated and we do plan to spread his ashes at the beach where he loved, but I think it'll be quite some time before we venture into getting another dog. But thank you everybody, it was really nice. My actual vet that looked after him all his life sent the family flowers on Saturday and I thought that was lovely. So July, I didn't really do much in July because of everything else that was going on. Um, I didn't really go into detail. There's a couple of people who I emailed, who we've talked through email who know. I don't some think people understand it wasn't really related to COVID in any way. It was more personal and it affected mental health. Uh, when I said it was difficult to get in my car and go down, down the driveway, it was extremely difficult. And that's because it's just the way it is. Um, some people think it's funny that I couldn't just get in the car and go down the driveway without having panic attack. But that's just the way it is. I'm getting better. I go to work every day and I come home. But I have that few seconds before I go that I start to stress a bit and that few seconds when I come home. But Hubby's always out there to meet me or see me off to help me. My bosses have been amazing even when... Baxter was ill. The amount of time off they gave me was amazing. I am truly fortunate to work for them. 
So the only thing I really made was my tea cozy of the month for July, which was Christmas in July. So I made my plum pudding tea cozy. I should have put this on the teapot. There will be a photo at the end so you can see it on a teapot. It's wool, made with wool and some acrylic. It's my design. There are similar people who make them out there. Mine is from a beanie pattern that I adapted. But yes, my plum pudding tea cozy for July. Um, congratulations to Mama Swift for winning the grand prize Christmas in July. And congratulations to Rosie at Nona's Stitching Lounge for winning my $100 video, uh, my 100 video giveaway. And... Um, I hope you enjoy your Amazon vouchers. I'm sorry, ladies, I wasn't very creative with gifts, but my mind wasn't really on the job and a gift voucher was the best I could come up with. But hopefully you'll have some crafty fun. And, um, yeah, I hope you enjoy them. So that was July for me. And August hit and I was still stewing a bit, but I've decided... Things have got to get better. So I came up with my mantra for August after thinking about everything that went wrong in July. So my mantra to August for August is to focus on the good because when you focus on the good, things can only get better. And that's what I'll be saying to myself through August. I don't have a lot of brain power for things to like crochet and knitting, anything complicated. I'm quite busy at work because this Sunday is the only day in the year when I work on a weekend because it's our annual general meeting and my head is spinning with things for that. And when I come home, that little sad moment when Bax is not there to greet me gets me down a bit. So I've been doing easy things with encouragement from my son. So if you're easily offended, please look away because I made, and I'm not sure you can see it, the rude word dishcloth. This is in um, Bendigo Wool Mills um, cotton. It's ready orange. It's a funny colour. But I made one and it did make me feel better. So much so that I made a second one in pink. This is the Lingcraft um, three weight cotton. And it got me thinking. I I had a heap of cotton in my stash, 50 gram balls, and I really like odds and sods, and I thought, well, what am I going to do? So then I started making face washes or dishcloths. This is this would be my favourite tutorial pattern. This is Bag o Days Cobble Stitch Cloth. Why? I like it. It's textured. It's great for the bathroom or it's great for the kitchen. And then because I had bits of cotton and scrubby left over, beige scrubby, I made loom knit scrubbies. I made so that was one set. Then I got the um I actually made a pink one to match my rude fish, um, face washer. I made a green one. Now this tutorial is Creative Grandma. I don't mind this. It's quite pretty. And I made a scrubby to match. And then I made, and this is smaller because it wasn't as much left. Now I think this might be a combination of two tutorials with a bit of a border to make it bigger. And I made a matching scrubby with a ring finger holder for this one. Now these are loom knit. This is Lama Ma Michaela's Loom Knit Scrubby on the 24 peg loom, which I learnt to loom knit with first. And I haven't got much further, but isn't it great to see Lama Ma Michaela back? And watching her and Dakota laugh this morning when I was watching a video inspired me. I've got to get back on it and start picking up. So yeah, I'm making a video. Now the other thing I made because it's driving me nuts is my husband likes to leave little bits of soap on the bathroom sink. He keeps forgetting to move them into the laundry, into the little soap bag I've got there for people to use to wash their hands. So I made a soap sack for the bathroom in orange, my favourite colour, for him to put them in. 
this is Krista from the Secret Yarnies soap sack, but I put a bit of a frill on the top. So yeah. Now the dish cloths or face washes, whatever you want to call them, the washcloths and the scrubby packs. They're not for anyone in particular. I think I'm going to donate them to charity. I've got something in idea in mind where they can go, where they'd be really useful. The rude ones with the rude words, they'll go to friends who aren't easily offended. Um, yeah, they were just, they actually made me feel better making them. <laughs> so that's what I've been making. The other thing I've made and knitted, which is really simple, I actually sold a beanie on my Etsy shop, which I don't get many sales on my Etsy shop. But it was like this. I made it ages ago and it was beige and brown. And it's Fisherman's Wool from Lion Brown. Now it's a big slouch like this. And the lady who bought it wanted another one. She's from Western Australia where I guess you'd say the hippies live. And she wants another one. And it has to be the big slouch for all their dreadlocks. So I've made her another one. This is... Fisherman was wool by Lion Brand. It's a beigey colour. Now pattern, and it's I've had it for a while, but I tried to print a fresh one off today because I've scribbled all over the other one. Was um, the man slouch reloaded from the Blue Brick, which is a Canadian company, and that's it there. Now it looks smaller there because they make it in a much lighter weight yarn. I've made it in like a four weight or a ten ply. They make it in a um, eight ply, so it turns out smaller. And I actually reduced the number in the cast on to make it small because I knew it was going to turn out big. But the lady who wants that wanted it really big, a big slouch. So that's the pattern, and it is a free pattern. So in the description below, I'll leave the links to Lama Mama Kayla's scrubby. I really urge you to try some loom knitting they are great scrubbies my favorite face washer pattern cobblestone by llama mama and a link to this pattern now like everyone else i've been doing shopping online and trying to support local now i really needed some different sizes in knitting needles and i'm struggling to get the shy goo needles i want they're on back order with someone and i went to the great ocean road woolen mill which is in victoria and they're really struggling at the moment with covid i didn't buy any of their wool it's uh, i think it's mainly alpaca and it's a bit xy for me at the moment because i did a lot of giveaways in july so i didn't buy yarn but i have had addy needles before uh, they're okay. I don't like them as much as Shigu, but they will do a good job. So, And they had the two sizes I wanted. And the other thing I got is needle huggers, the little teddy bears. Now, they actually had them nearly $4 cheaper than Spotlight, including delivery. All of this arrived really quickly, but it sort of sat on the table unloved um, while I was a bit off the planet so to speak so yeah where are my notes so so yeah I've used up quite a bit of my cotton stash I still have a bit to go so I haven't done anything on my Phoenix Cal sorry ladies anything complicated has been pushed aside I haven't done any more Tunisian crochet um, but I have nearly finished my 100 day project the Doctor Who scarf it's 100 days is due on August the 8th. I have a few things to do and hopefully I'll have it finished in time. So we'll check out that video. I did make something else. Hopefully I'll get that finished. And you can have a look at my 100 day project, the Doctor Who scarf. Boy, is it long. I haven't measured it yet. So our wonderful Yarny sister, Dana at Dana's Wonderlust Cronations at Croatia. Crochet. Dana at Wonderlust Crochet has come up with another great idea. Now in the USA, the 11th of August is National Crochet Day and she wants to have a Fibre Hearts Day and you leave little Fibre Art gifts around for people to find. You leave a little note if you found this, I now belong to you. That sort of thing. 
So make sure you leave a comment on this video because on the 11th of August I might upload a video and you might find a little surprise in there. Because even though I'm not in the USA, I'd really like to support Nat the National Fibre Hearts Day, which is the 11th of August and the 12th of September is International Crochet Day. So there you go. Two months where we celebrate crochet. Um, that's it, guys. It hasn't been um, easy, but I'm getting there. And thank you once again to everyone who sent such lovely um, warm wishes and hugs and everything until next time make sure you take care of each other and have at least one crafty day bye for now